Holla ballers, it's Preacher, and I hope you're enjoying Legion. It's time for us to start putting out some good Legion content. First, we're going to be looking at the Mythic Dungeons. We've noticed plenty of people who are a little bit scared of Mythic Dungeons because it carries that Mythic word, not crisp. What we actually want to do is get you guys in there, and not only that, turn you into a carry, take it that little bit further. So this video is got, not going to go over like boss strategies and stuff, most of them are plainly obvious, but give you the small hints and tips that people seem to get wrong, which makes your run significantly easier. And what you'll find is one, these are the kind of things that will get you noticed if you're still looking for a guild, and also make your runs more successful. If you're not looking for a guild and you're going to be pugging and preparing yourself for those mythic pluses. Remember, the mythics in Legion are just the heroics you'd know from Warlords of Draenor all the way back to Wrath of the Lich King. They're very, very simple, although it has that mythic word attached. The real Real challenge will come when we do the keystones in which case we'll be doing a similar video and update then of how to deal with them all right guys so without further ado let's go so remember these are just heroics i recommend an item level of 810 if you are capable of queuing with complete strangers to complete heroics you can do just fine in an organized group in mythics now obviously lfg if that is what you're using your mileage may vary with that statement we have seen some pretty crazy things already now we are looking for tips to help you improve your success chance so some of these might seem incredibly basic to the many of you who've already done your mythics a couple of times but remember not everyone is that good so black rook hold let's start there very cool instance be really careful with both dpsing and tanking in those initial corridors lots of patrols use line of sight pull them around a corner you'll get them nice and contained make the dps much higher and avoid many extra ads that might lead to a wipe on the first boss soul echoes it takes quite some time for them to actually detonate from when you get the graphic that means you should be overlapping them as much as possible so you're not making the whole room full of soul echoes we've seen plenty of people running around like crazy don't do that drop a couple try and run around back again and get them to come back into the same spot and use the same space again there are several ways to make the trash before ravencrest easier okay pay attention to the risen arcanists they get a self buff of 50 percent damage that needs to either be spell stolen by a mage for another load of dps or purged off otherwise it will start wrecking you you need to spread safely so that the hunter's barrage doesn't hit several people when it casts so don't be clumped up like two of you the healer and the range stuck together melee and the tank stuck together don't do that because the first cast is going to hit multiple people tanks need to make sure that bonebreaker stun is aimed away from the group at all times so that means tanks don't dance around even when the, the ads are like spawning in get yourself a position nice and early on and stay there so that dps know where they can go at the same time you can use the pillars in that room to really bunch them up again and get a really nice dps instead of them all being spread out and difficult to control moving through the various trash be mindful that it's extremely painful. This trash gets very, very painful. So be smart about how you're using your stuns, etc. Instead of just like using it at random so it looks like you're using your stuns, think about when you're using it. Pay attention to both the group HP. If it's low, really low, and your healer's trying to catch up, that's a good time to be dropping a shockwave, a chaos nova, whatever it might be, and stunning the adds, or stopping multiple dangerous casts. You get three or four casts of the flame breath on the little troll golem guys. You, that's something you really want to stop because that's going to fill an entire room with fire very quickly and that's something you want to be stopping be mindful during smite smash spite smash spite smash spites fell vomit ability that comes from the bats it can be positioned by the targeted player so you get a green line that tells you where the bat is and where he's going to be casting from so what you can then do is move to the side walls and actually position it so that the vomit actually goes completely against the wall and takes up no space in the room line it up nicely and that leaves the entire room open for the rest of the players to deal with their knockbacks and also to just make sure they're not getting creamed okay without having to run around a lot of vomit all over the floor and for the final boss the bees oh god not the bees yeah kill the bees <laughs> kill the bees or nicholas cage will haunt you for the rest of time Let's move on to the Dark Art Thicket then. So Dark Art Thicket has really little changes from Heroic to Mythic. There's a couple of extra boss mechanics, but they're so obvious I don't need to explain them to you. The main tips here would be to interrupt the caster trash whenever possible, okay? That'd be if you're melee or ranged, okay? You'll see that a lot of the pulls are melee, but then you'll have these couple of casters that stand out casting. If you just go ahead and interrupt them and move everything into a ball, you don't want mobs hanging out outside of the death ball where the tank's not attacking them. You don't want your tank running around like crazy. So go ahead give them an interrupt just bring them into the pack okay 
The charge of the elemental before the downdraft boss, it, that charge can be stunned and it can also be sidestepped. So you don't need to get knocked into the eggs all the time. I see entire groups of people constantly being knocked in. It has a cast time, okay? It's very quick, but it can be stunned if you're ready for it. You could drop a kidney shot. Or what's the new kidney shot called with a gun? You could drop one of those. Uh, all that kind of stuff. You can stun it. You can dragon's breath it. You can just move to the side so it doesn't hit you and it will come back to you. You can do all those kind of things. So the last tips I really had on Xavius was that there are more mechanics that you can control, but there's no major tips here except pay attention to whether you should be stacked or grouped. Okay, so you'll have the growing paranoia, which means you want to stand on your own. It's the red one. Or you'll have one with a blue circle around you, which means you want to stand with other people. It's really that easy. Uh, if you can immunity, feed the weak, do that. There's a lot of damage going out there, especially if your healer's not very well geared. Uh, if you can immunity, feed the weak, do something just to get rid of it. Vanish it, cloak it, ice block it, whatever you've got. Just pop that out there and stop that being a, a part of the encounter. So let's move on to I have a shower then. Compared to Dark Heart Thicket, though, this has plenty of tips, okay? First, if you're a tank, position away from the fucking turtles, okay? Especially for those of us who cannot not cleave. We can't not cleave. Like a fire mage that I play, we can't not cleave. It naturally happens. So if you're going to tank and say things like, just AOE here and you'll be slightly close to the turtles, just move away, okay? Do us all a favor. Just move away. Make sure nobody's going to do an accidental whirlwind or anything like that or stop players being able to use their DPS. It's important that tanks understand that you have a lot of control over how your group does damage. If you put them in a difficult spot, they're going to stop using spells that they ordinarily would use and that's going to drastically reduce the DPS. Yes, all right. The caster trash here, the larger nagas, is a various, it's a variety of spells and it tests your observation. So what you'll have is people who have learned to interrupt, but that's actually a bit of a, a gamble as to what you're doing. The large naga, you need to, you need to save your interrupt, okay, for polymorph fish. I know that in an organized group, dispel usually isn't a big issue, but most of you who are going to do pugs and stuff like that, dispel is a fucking lost cause. It's a spell they've never even seen. Your healers will just leave you there for like 12 seconds. So if you have an interrupt, and especially if you're the tank, the damage isn't a big deal that they do with the other spells. Make sure you're interrupting polymorph fish. Stop that happening, and therefore you won't have a DPS who's out of action for like 12 seconds, which is a lot of lost damage. Currently, in the way the game is right now, if you kill Sapantrix before you kill Hate Coil, there will be no blowing winds, and more importantly, no fucking seagulls, you fucking seagull pricks. So if you want to, and you're doing Mythic, I would recommend right now that you kill Sapantrix before you kill Hate Coil, and come back to Hate Coil after. It'll make the fight so much better. You're not going to have seagulls running around, potentially stunning the tank, stunning the healer, stunning the DPS, and just generally spoiling that whole fight. And the blowing winds during Toxic Wound can be a total pain in the ass. So really, right now, do that. If you have something that allows you to soak Toxic Wound, like AMS, Ice Block, Cloak, all those things, without spreading it around the entire room, do that. That's not just that's not just to save space, but it will make the fight so much easier if you're running with worse players. Remember, we're trying to increase the success chance of your runs. This is your benefit. So if you can keep Toxic Wound in one place instead of spreading it all around, particularly like we did with Soul Echoes, if you can do something like you've got Disengage or you've got Blink or you've got something that allows you to move really quickly like Fell Rush, if you just create in the same spot and then move back over it again so it keeps stacking over the same area, Area, you're going to make the fight so much easier for the rest of the group for anybody who's panicking and struggling you'll make the fight much better for them okay moving back to hate coil then just make sure you've got a solid timer for the breath okay the debuff the curse of the witch so you can maximize dps before turning it away from the group and a lot of people don't seem to understand this mechanic curse of the witch has a timer of a various length of time it can be like 10 seconds six seconds when it runs out you do the big purple breath the idea is that you aim it away from the group otherwise you're going to knock everybody away slows dps down ruins positioning can cause islands to be despawned unnecessarily you might knock people into static shock so they get all stunned and stuff a lot of problems come from that i will say though that the breath can kill the ads all right so the achievement for this fight if you're doing your glory is actually to kill the ads with the breath that's something you need to bear in mind that it can do that but generally speaking most people aren't doing the achieve and you should be aiming it the fuck away most of the trash between hate coil and deep beard is totally skippable okay besides a couple of murloc packs in the cave which is super easy try and avoid the snails right the snails try and avoid the snails but that, most of that is entirely skippable learn how to do that don't be that guy who trundles off and pulls a giant or some fucking nonsense 
when it gets to Deepbeard himself, the Quake ability that comes under your feet, ordinarily you obviously want to move. But if you do have Gaseous Bubble, okay, which is the ability, if you're not sure how this ability works, you get the bubble around your character, you will have seen it. You need to purposely take damage to get rid of that. If you don't take damage and reduce the, the strength of that Gaseous Bubble, you're going to um, like explode on everybody. You don't want that to happen. Quake actually almost one-shots it. I say almost. It nearly one-shots it entirely. So you will notice that when you get the bubble, Quake casts shortly after. Stand in your Quake. Take the Quake. And then you only really, if you want to get rid of it 100%, uh, you only need to soak a couple of the pools that are flying around. Other than that, you can continue to DPS as normal. I really recommend using the wall at the side of the room. So you don't get pushed over there if you've got winds blowing as well. That'll make your life much easier rather than being blown all over the room. The only tip for Ashara, as, as chaotic as that fight is, uh, especially as we get into Mythic Plus, which we will be doing a video on, is not to spread out too much. Don't spread out all over the place. Use your tank as a baseline. Your tank only has to move for Deluge, and then he should be moving back, okay? He should be moving back, and that gives you a point, a fixed point, where you guys can move around and be there. This both does a couple of things. One, it increases the efficiency of your healer, so he's not having to run around and try and find people. He also needs to dispel the arcane bomb from people, so he needs to be in range for that to do it quickly. As well with soaking the new, new mechanic that is in Mythic, which is Crushing Depths, which is an ability you all need to share damage on, okay? So... Although it doesn't particularly matter in Mythic Zero, okay? It's not really going to wipe you this stuff. When we get into more difficult stuff, you need to be mindful of this position because it's going to make it much easier for you, okay? On to Halls of Valor then. So similar to Thicket, most of Halls of Valor is really similar to Heroic with the mechanics are more deadly, right? They have more health, more damage, usual stuff. But there are still a couple of tips I've got for you. Ensure you have a plan to manage the dangerous caster as you approach Hersia, okay? I'm going to say Hersia. You either CC him or you just interrupt him. Have a range, do it, or have somebody you can, like, shadow step up there and kick him or something to bring him down, all right? Last thing you want to do is leave that guy stood up there. And also, when the tank drags him up there uh, or drags the other three mobs up to him, you'll have line of sight issues unless you're going really, really quickly. So just interrupt him and he'll just run down to the pack, and that's all you need to do. During Sanctify, a lot of people like run away and try and avoid it. Tanks can easily soak that, even into a couple of Mythic Pluses. The tanks literally can stand in front of it and soak it. Melee, just stand directly behind your tank. That's all you need to do. Stand directly behind your tank and you can continue to fully DPS. Just move away before he does the light knockback ability on the tanks, okay? It's a big shining light beam. Has a decent cast time. Just move away for that. But during Sanctify, instead of running in circles, just stand behind your tank and let him soak it. After you kill Fenrir, don't mount. I see a lot of people mounting after this. So when you kill Fenrir, assuming you kill Herja first, you'll get the huge speed buff. Only works while you're on foot. Running is way, way quicker. Way, way quicker. And timers will become a factor in Mythic soon, so that's something you need to be aware of. When you kill the trash before God King, the four guys that you have to activate, the order to do them in that's the best so far is one, three, then you do two and four together. So that's counting from the left, okay? The reason you do this is this ridiculously reduces tank damage, like by crazy. Don't do them one, two, three, four, or any other order. Just do one, three, and then two and four. Your tank damage will be drastically slashed, making life much easier. On to the God King then. I would actually suggest that some of you consider using your Bloodlust here and not on odin uh because this fight is much more like beneficial for bloodlust because the valkyr window is actually quite small but i'll leave that to you but i would say during ragnarok when you get behind ragnarok and you have the shield up you can move quite far away from that shield and not take any damage you should be doing that because that's going to really reduce the amount of pools of fell on the floor for the melee you don't want to be doing that so if you're ranged healers or anything like that and especially melee just spread in a way that you're within the shield DPSing, doing your job, but not clumped up so you can reduce all those pools being around the boss, all right? Because they, then the guys have to move away and they stop doing damage, and that sucks. And then obviously become a Valkyrie and win and don't get stunned on Odin. Let's move on to the Mar of Souls then. So the main difficulty in Mar of Souls when you move up to Mythic and Mythic Plus is that it's very condensed, lots of condensed trash groups. So you really have to be careful with positioning, particularly tanks. You really need to be careful where you're tanking packs because the patrols, the doggy patrols and all that kind of stuff can very quickly wipe your group if you're not careful. So just be mindful going through there that you're just watching out and being aware of where the patrols are, what they're doing, who's doing what, and keeping that stuff nice and tight so people aren't accidentally pulling. 
when you move on to Harboron, this is great for tanks and also for everybody else. Be close to the boss, okay? You'll have to move around as a group, but be close to the boss. This is going to hugely increase your kill times. Make them so much faster. What's going to happen is the adds that spawn, the fragment and the soul rip, they'll all be in the position where you're already DPSing. So you're not going to have to like switch targets over to the left, switch targets over to the right, or just kill something that's on the other side of the room. Be in one close group so they spawn in the same area. If your range to being uncooperative though, tanks, you can be an absolute ball here and move the boss to the adds. You can see who's going to get the debuff, where they're going to spawn from. Move the boss to there. Make a death ball. You can make a death ball very, very easily there. Simple tip, but it should. Uh, some people don't do it. Ensure you save an interrupt or a stun for the channeled heal on the trash before hell yeah. My god. Oh, so many people who have just let that thing cast while, uh, and at least I can say on my counter spell that it's just been on cooldown. I'm just going, fuck everything. Uh, save, so save something for that heal. They cast lots and lots of things, similar to what we saw in the Eye of Shara. They'll cast lots of spells, but it's the heal that we care about. Get rid of that. During Hell, you fight itself. A little chaotic, but honestly, the fight is very, very simple if you're paying attention. Your biggest problem here is obviously the camera being first person. So, all DPS should be focusing on the destructive tentacles, okay? They need to be tanked. I see a lot of tanks attacking tentacles on the side and not noticing that a destructive tentacle has been spawned, and then it kills the melee or whatever, or kills a ranged who happens to be nearby, or it just AoEs the entire group to death. So, tank them, and everybody just switch them and burn them down real, real quick, then go back to all the other tentacles. Pay close attention to where she's facing. So many people die to this breath, and it's the camera does not help here at all, because you've got to look at the ground breakages, but particularly during her breath or when it's about to gas, just make sure you can see where she's looking and be ready to move. My last tip here is I've seen groups wipe hard or take no damage. Pay cl just pay close attention when she actually submerges. That should be a rest period for your healer. Don't be a noob, is my advice there. Don't be a noob and take unnecessary damage there. Find yourself a little fucking spot and just chill the fuck out until the f she'll, until she comes back. You shouldn't be taking damage. You shouldn't be running around like crazy and taking damage. Your healer should be able to regen there, and your healer might be running out of mana there, especially with all the extra damage over times and stuff that go on there. Let's go down to Nultharian's Lair then. The trash skip at the beginning of the dungeon is used in every difficulty now, but I'll mention it in case you don't know how to do it. So Rockmara. The constant stream of adds is usually focusing a healer. Tanks, you can use stuff to make that much, much easier if you don't have some sort of natural cleave like a lot of the tanks do. Positioning uh, positioning in such a way that the healer's near you so they'll come towards you. Or if you have something like Death and Decay or a Rune or something like that that you could drop on top of the healer, makes your life so much easier that you don't have to start spinning the boss around and fucking up the melee DPS or anything like that. Really fucking easy to make sure that that never becomes a problem. Throughout the dungeon, though, watch out for the rockbound pelters. Lots of different types of trash in here, but the rockbound pelters are the smallest ones, and they do incredible damage when they throw those jagged discs. They'll just sit there and spam it all day, and they'll spread out and jump around. You should be prioritizing them. The only more damaging trash in the entire place is the piercing shards on the rock hulks, the big, big blue guys. So prioritize the pelters when you pull those things, not the ones that are casting the stone stuff. Look for the pelters that just spam jagged disc. Just don't be fooled by their size. It's Blizzard doing a thing where it's like, the smallest ones, they're actually they're, they're pretty fucking dangerous. Uh, when it's Ul Ulrog, Ulrog uh, the totem guy that you've got to watch, just be really mindful. Uh, I was constantly watching, making sure when I'm playing melee and ranged move near me, fuck off, man. Fuck off. Those crushing totems will kill other people. So spawning them on the tank or spawning them on the, mele on the melee in any way is a real fucking pain in the ass. Just spread the fuck out and get the hell away from melee range, okay? Lots of fights that have stuff like this going on. Similar to Halls of Valor, you don't stand near the bosses like a range because you'll get a dancing weapon on the melee and the tank. You just fucking suck. Uh, kill the fucking worms. Why does no one realize this? So the little worms that spot are just before Naraxxus... The little things that start casting metamorphosis, those are going to turn into another underground worm if you don't switch immediately and kill them. I see one in ten people actually notice to do this. So I'm telling everyone watching this, kill the fucking worms real fast. So during the Raxes, once you get out to Mythic, the ads jumping down from the rafters, you can't really ignore them anymore. Most of, I know most of you have been ignoring them, certainly in normal and fucking heroic. But that damage buff that the, the boss gains if he gets to eat them or whatever, uh, is going to start killing the tank. <laughs> so you need to kill them, you need to actually switch them and kill them. 
Moving on to the last boss then, during Dark Rule, most people are seeing this now, but just to make it clear, there is absolutely no need to clear all that trash on that bottom platform. What you actually want to do is just pull him to one side and just face him against a wall, or face him so he's looking at the wall with the tank with his back to a wall. That just means that his knockbacks and his landslides will go into the wall. This does two things. One, he stays in one position. DPS goes much, much higher. Okay, DPS is much higher because he's in one place and the Molten Golem will spawn in one place. But it also ensures that the walls, the protective walls from the AoE, they remain intact because they'll form a nice wall where he's not landsliding them back down again. So a little note here is range DPS, you can attack through that wall. It doesn't count as line of sight. You can stand right behind it and be permanently safe for the entire encounter. It's super easy. Uh, Vault of the Wardens then is our last one we're going to look at. Uh, the Vault... It can be one of the more difficult ones in early gear. It's not it's not difficult by any means. Again, this is like heroic difficulty, but certainly it feels like a little step up. Uh, but it shouldn't pose much of a problem. The best tip for Vault is to just be more cautious. And I'm talking to the tanks here. Just be a little bit more cautious. Because Ninja Pulls you can kind of get away with in a lot of the other dungeons. Ninja Pulls in Vault, because of the way the trash synergizes together, is a real pain in the ass. And this will become relevant when we cover the Arcway uh, later in the week. Ninja Pulls can really punish you severely. So just be aware that you want to be safe and fast. Okay, Big rules, safe and fast, that I teach every single tank. So the first boss, Tirithin, uh, after he does his interrupt phase where he sort of blinks away and then you have to interrupt him, he's only dangerous when he actually reaches 50% until you're overgeared, right? You can burn him down from the start once you're overgeared. But if you're doing it in earlier gear, like 8, 10-ish, I'd really recommend you save things like Bloodlust and your major DPS cooldowns for when he hits 50% so you can burn through that phase quickly. I can tell you from experience of doing the Mythic Pluses in here that that lower 50% on that fight becomes a fucking nightmare. An absolute nightmare. So I'd really recommend getting used to the fact that you don't do much until he hits 50% and then you go all out. Pre-plan what ability you are going to use on Tormentorum to counter her Sapped Soul ability. So if you're not sure what's going on with Sapped Soul, Sapped Soul is a debuff that she will place on you that means the next spell you use will go on a 10 second cooldown. So you want to use something that naturally has a 10 second cooldown or above. If you're using something like Demon's Bite or fucking Furious Slash or Bloodthirst, you're going to lose that ability for a long time. And you don't want that to happen. So you need to pre-plan what you're going to use during that ability so that you're not panicking. A lot of people panic. Ah, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Uh, pre-plan it when you're going in. So like for me, I used Blink. Uh, let's ask Ghosty. What did you use during Sap Soul on Vault of the Wardens for, so you didn't go on cooldown? He has no idea what the ability does. You should watch this video. It's pretty good. <laughs> during the Glazer fight, uh, tough for quite a few people, but it's okay if you're being the baller. Again, this is about you being the guy who makes your success chance happen. So you should be the one who's prepared to turn the mirrors correctly. That doesn't mean, Preacher, which mirrors should I turn correctly? I'm showing you in the video. But you, uh, after a couple of goes, and you will understand which mirrors need to be turned. But particularly, be the guy who quickly changes and kills his ad. That ad will fuck you completely. Kill that ad. If you are struggling for space because he drops the purple floor patches, if you uh, tanks, if you drag glazer over that, you will soak them up uh, and make that less of an issue for you. So that's something you bear in mind. So moving on to Cardana then during Felsong, uh, throwing the light is far more efficient than like moving around to where the ads are. You can increase DPS there. You can even sort of like leave. Leave, leave the light there for a second while everyone kills it and stuff. You can throw it over there. So that's far more efficient way of doing it. Uh, note to the demon hunters here. You can abuse spectral sight in order to see the phalanx at the end uh, while no one else can see it. So demon hunter tanks can pop it. If you don't see the gap straight away, particularly, you know, it spawns. You didn't see where it spawned. You're not sure where the gap is in the phalanx. You can spectral sight and see where it is. Okay, it'll obviously break during damage and stuff. But you can see where it is. If you get unsure, don't panic and... Uh, during the first phalanx phase, she's actually undamageable. So DPS, Havoc, Demon Hunters, you can just spend your time in Spectral Sight and just have a real easy time with that entire mechanic. Our final one then is Violet Hold Mythic. <laughs> what can we say for tips for Violet Hold Mythic? The only tip is the incredibly ob obvious one. The After you kill the second boss, the third trash waves are the far the most dangerous. So just save the AoE runes, the safety beacons until those and you can just basically skip the entire third trash waves of dangerous mobs and run into just get straight to the last bosses that's the best thing you can have it so those are some basic tips that hopefully should increase your success chance and hopefully give you the confidence to get into these dungeons without struggling too much and being aware of the stuff you need to be aware of i've obviously left out going over absolutely every detail i think some of that should be I, the learning part of wow is the most fun for me so i wouldn't want to spoil it for all of you guys 
we will be looking at the arcway and quarter stars later this week if you're worried about those dungeons so there you have it guys thank you so much for listening and i'll see you again all right bye